G'day everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today we are going to run through how you can do time comparison analysis but with a custom calendar. So not everyone actually works over the just normal calendar where you have every single day and where the time intelligence calcs are really optimized. So the time intelligence calcs in Power BI, they do amazing work, they do all the hard work for you. But if you have a weekly calendar um, or a custom financial week calendar or, or something of that nature, time intelligence calcs just do not work. So what we have to do is we actually have to write um, custom logic, usually by using the filter function, something within the filter function, um, which is wrapped around a calculate statement. And then we can then evaluate these, we can still do all these time comparison calculations. So I've done a couple of other videos on this and I just now want to run through one example with time comparison where we might want to uh, compare, say the results we got in say one week in one financial year versus, or, or any calendar year, any custom calendar year, um, versus a prior week. Um, and so, um, and, I'm, and I'm gonna show you why the, or how, what happens when you actually you try and utilize the time intelligence calculation, it won't work. And so we've got to use some custom logic to actually um, get it working. So I want to show you how easy it is so to calculate or do time comparisons with time intelligence functions. So DATAD, this is you know basically does all the time comparison you could ever want. You can do any time interval. So I've done a year here, but you can do date, week, quarter, and year. In this case, so I'm just going to show you year. And so if I go and evaluate, so up here we've got no results because there is no data before this um, before this date. But if I if we just rem remember twenty two thousand odd, and then we go down to the same date um, in the next year, you'll see that it does it calculates it correctly, and we get the twenty two thousand eight hundred and eighty nine. Now, if we have a custom calendar where we've got say just a year and just a week to work with. And so this week number does not align, so it doesn't actually align to weeks or perfect weeks within within a, a particular year or or with a with a simple calendar table. Um, if I go and use the exact same formula, you'll see that we get the results here. That's fine because there is no um, there is nothing to compare it to. There is no data before this time. But check this out. If we go to this uh, the very first week inside of 2015. Remember, this doesn't align to any calendar weeks or anything like that. So the first of this month or in this financial year does, is not is not actually aligned um, to this first week. This actually is a hangover from, um, say, a month before. And so in theory, this with this 160, right, you'd think, okay, well, this has got to be the first the first week here. Well, it's not because of this misalignment and and how the dates overlay on the on this financial week number. So we need some custom logic in here to make this work, okay? And so this will be very applicable to any custom calendar table. You've got to use similar type of logic or similar type of techniques to actually get this to work. Once you actually work work through one example here, I'm 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 very sure you'd be able to apply this in many. So I'm just going to now work through the logic and show you show you what you need to what you need to put in there. So I'm going to go sales Sales LY, uh, then I'm just going to put custom here. And then I, I'm going to use some variables because I um, I always use them when I can. Simplifies things a lot. So I'm going to go variables, current, uh, fin week. And then I'm going to use selected values. So this is a relatively new function um, inside of DAX and highly recommend um, getting to know it. It really quickens up a lot of logic that you might have had to write in the past especially if you're using values and then you might have to go if has one value and so this actually simplifies all of that and so I'm going to go fin uh, week number yep that's what I want and then I'm going to create another variable down here I'm going to call this current fin year and then I'm going to go again selected value and then I'm just going to put in my fin year here Cool, so that's all the setup that I'm going to do inside of variables and then I'm actually going to type out the actual formula now and so we're still going to use calculate total sales. That does not change. But then inside here, we're going to put some different logic. So I'm going to go filter all dates. Um, we need the entire table here. So I'm just going to go OK. Uh, just get rid of that and close the brackets. Then I'm going to jump back down here. Now this is where the, the logic comes in. So we need to work out, OK, well, is the financial week number, is it 
equal to the current financial week, right? Because we, we want to compare one financial uh, week one year to the year before. So is the current one, uh, in, uh, which is which would be calculated through here, does it equal to any uh, of these as you iter as we iterate through every single um, every single row inside of this table? And if it does, we that's good, but we need to also isolate the year, right? Because we want to figure out, okay, what's our current year? We want to jump back one year prior to that. So I'm going to go fin year equals the current fin year. So this is my variable minus one. So that's the big trick. That's going to jump us back in this case from 2015 back to 2014 to get the get that week's number uh, for us. And it's going to bring it into the current context of our results. So I'm just going to close that off. And then if I place this inside of this table, you're going to see, I'm going to just format it, just give me one second, you're going to see that that now, see that number is different to this one, but the number is correct because if I jump back to my first week here, you'll see 218,452, which is exactly what we've got there. And then just to double check, what do we got here? 424 and then 424, great. Okay, so it now, so that let logic, we've had to manually do it instead of the time and intelligence calcs, but that logic has achieved what we wanted to achieve. And then what you can do is you can you can then branch out all your measures just like um, just like you would ordinarily, um, but that obviously you've got to get the, the correct results first. Now, so through this example, this is this is applicable to any table, right? Any custom table, it's going to be something similar to this. You might need to place, depending on the calc that you wanted to do, is around time intelligence or time comparison. So you might want to, you might need to change these or adjust these just slightly. Um, but it's it's going to be in something similar to this, and you've got to write some some sort of logic that that enables you to get um, or bring bring uh, results from a different context into the current. And you, this is this is how you're actually going to do it. You know, for instance, you you might want to show um, results two weeks ago or five weeks ago or six weeks ago or something like that half year ago it's always going to be similar type of logic that's that's a, that's the key thing that i wanted to um, showcase here okay i'm going to round things off there hopefully those with custom calendars found this uh, video useful um, if you did throw us a like on the video really appreciate it if you actually want to download this um, resource you can uh, this will um, be uh, in where all the other resources from Enterprise DNA are. Uh, just check out the link in the description below. Just requires a small investment. Um, other than that, definitely subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. New videos every weekday. All the best with this one. Take care. Speak to you soon.